Hi everyone, I'm the Scale Engineer and welcome back to the studio. Today, after way too long, we're finally coming back to my favorite video type on the channel, a build video. We're going to be revisiting the Russian Paper Panzer, the T-14 Armada, with the second to last video of the build process, where we'll be finishing off the turret. We'll be doing a super complicated metal and photo etch barrel, 3D printed antennas, and other small details. So make sure to stick around to the end of the video so you don't miss any of this goodness. Finally, before we get on with it, if you enjoy the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Without further ado, let's get on with the video. Starting off with the gun mantlet, the angles are super sharp and sanding off the seam lines rounded off the corners. To fix this, I filled in the rounded corners with CA glue and then sanded the flats back into it. Doing this with a sanding stick helps me line up with the existing surface and propagate that out to the corner. That left me with a super sharp and defined corner that were consistent across the length of the bend in the mantlet. I had to take special care with the front points of the mantlet since they are really fine, small details. I also made sure to deburr the barrel interfaces from superglue to make sure that it was a good fit. Overall, I'm really happy with how they look, and while not super obvious on the finished model, it's going to look way better than what we started with. Starting now with the barrel, we have a bunch of these fins down the length of it, which can be super fiddly. To start, I'm going to fold the fin in half and run thin CA down the length of it. It makes it much stronger and easier to handle. Just make sure to avoid touching it since the capillary action will wake the superglue to your fingers. The main trick with these is to make sure that they're properly aligned because the locator tabs for them aren't as good as I'd hope and allow for a lot of play, especially when you start melting the plastic with super glue on top of that. Finally, I'm going to tack them down to the gun barrel with gel super glue to hold it in place and then now take advantage of capillary action and run thin CA down the length of the fin. This will eliminate gaps and make sure that the fin has a strong bond to the barrel. Next, and this is totally the part that I was most dreading in the process, but it's time to install the small retaining bands for the barrel. I'm not 100% what they're for, possibly to secure a heat shroud or minimetic nets, but someone let me know in the comments. The assembly for each of these little bands is four parts, one double axle, two strap holders, and a strap. I did not show putting the strap holders and axle together since it's too hard to film, but basically just attach the strap holder, making sure that the holes line up so you can pass the strap through later, and then attach the other one facing the other way after. Again, making sure that they line up. I then found it much easier to thread one side of the strap in before attempting to attach it to the barrel. Thank you. 
The best way that I've found to create smooth curves in photo etch is to take a drill bit shaft with a smaller diameter than the target photo etch diameter. Then roll the photo etch between the shaft and your finger. This makes any cylinder bend super easy and consistent. Then we will simply slide the strap assembly onto the barrel, feed the strap into the free end of the holding mechanism, cinch it down, and then cut off the excess. After that, we can run thin CA into the strap assembly, firmly attaching it to the barrel. Repeat this process six times. For me, it took about 20 to 30 minutes, give or take, for each one, so within four hours, you should be all done and good to go. The next thing we're going to want to do is the collar at the end of the barrel, possibly for a rangefinder or some other sensor, but again, I'm not sure. Again, I used a shaft with a slightly smaller diameter to roll the collar into a consistent radius, and then ran a thin super glue under the collar. Finally, we will add the small sensor box to the end of the barrel, and we're done! Next, we're going to add some custom 3D printed details and plastic details. The antenna was so complicated and the original part kit wasn't perfectly circular due to the seam lines and potentially also a mold mismatch that I decided to redesign and 3D print one for myself. Next, since the T14 Armada has an unmanned turret, we need to add a ton of small sensors and cameras around the turret, which you can see is what I'm adding right now. If anyone knows what these sensors and stuff are for, I'm assuming they're cameras, please let me know in the comments. Next, onto one of my favorite details of the kit. We have the active protection system tubes underneath the main turret. I decided to reprint them since they would look so much better, since they're already circular, but also the little vents in the sides can actually go all the way into the tube instead of just a solid surface detail and a lot of other details can be super fine and well defined, which was just missing from the original kit parts. Both the antennas and the APS tubes are available in my Colts 3D store if you want to purchase them for yourself. Personally, I think it's well worth the extra effort. Now we can attach the two turret sections together and proceed with some of the main surface details. This next detail was a really fun one to implement. It required a bunch of really long, gently curved bends as precise spots to make sure that the turret basket is installed properly. But it was essentially done the same way as the rest of the curved photo etch, rolled on a slightly smaller cylinder of some sort at these precise locations, helping to make installation super easy. In fact, it fits so well that it stayed there without glue and then was able to be glued after the fact. Just be sure to be patient with this piece and bend it into shape slowly and carefully, make sure not to go too fast and make too sharp of an angled bend or otherwise. The robotic MG mount is my next target of interest. I found that the barrel and gun housing of the assembly needed refinement, mainly due to seam lines. I recreated the housing and flash hider in SOLIDWORKS and then 3D printed them on my Anycubic Photon Mono 4K. To recreate the barrel, I cut off a section of blunt hypodermic needle with my Dremel, which slotted into my design and completed the assembly. If you are interested in learning how to design your own 3D CAD models, there are plenty of tutorials on YouTube, and I personally suggest getting a SOLIDWORKS 3D Experience account. It goes about for 50 bucks annually, and is on par with professional engineering software. I'm not sponsored by Dassault Systems, I just appreciate their product, and I like to share what I find useful in my own hobby work. The main support arm for the weapon is molded hollow, and I'm not 100% sure whether it's designed like this in real life, but I decided to fill it in since I preferred how it looked.
We can then glue it together and install it with the rest of the turret. I also redesigned and 3D printed the antennas on the tank since they are much more complicated than usual and the fidelity of the molded parts were less than desirable. This little photo etch assembly was one of the most complicated on the turret and I'm not even sure what they are. Since there are only a few of them, it seemed like they might be for the tracks, but that doesn't make any sense since there are over 150 track lengths. If anyone knows what they are, please let me know. Anyways, as you can see, there are a lot of pieces to make. There are nine in total, and I already constructed one to make sure that I knew what I was getting into. I decided to install them in an assembly line fashion, folding all the individual parts first and then gluing them together afterwards. I used gel superglue to tack them down, and then I reinforced the bond by running ultra-thin superglue into the gaps. To simulate the bracket posts for the racks, I 3D printed these tiny pins that slotted perfectly into the photo etch, and then used ultra-thin superglue to lock them in. They can be a little tricky to install, but we got there in the end. Superglue debonder helped to get rid of the excess CA. They could then be glued onto the model. It's not my best work, but I think the final result is all right. We can then install the snorkel in the back, which I totally forgot to film the modification process, but it's just a lot of rolling and using captured pins to slot everything together. Now we can add some of the fine little details like the tiny light brackets and retention pin cables for the front sensors. And that is finally the end of the turret build process. I am super happy with how this came together. I think it looks really neat. All the little 3D printed modifications and photo edge parts we added really elevates the turret detail and should make it look really unique with the final model. The final part of the build series will be the side skirts, tracks, running gear, and one of my favorite parts, the slat armor. So you definitely won't want to miss that with custom 3D printed tracks and a full tutorial on soldering slat armor. Anyways, Thank you so much for watching the video this far. If you found it helpful or at least enjoyed it, please let me know by commenting down below and demolishing that like button. If you want to get notified next time for my future videos, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next installment. I have been the Scale Engineer and we'll see you next time.